out there all my DIY artsy crafty friends welcome back to part two of this two-part video series where I am coloring in this double page in Rory Dobner's adult coloring book the ink house if you missed part one of this video and you would like to see how I completed the images that are shown here currently I'll link a card up above and you can see how I did that if you are new here, welcome. My name's Dee, the Messy Perfectionist, and on this channel, I am sharing my love and my learning for all things DIY artsy crafty. If you did happen to miss part one of this video, I can go ahead and link that name card up above if you're interested to see how I completed the images that are shown on the page. As in the last one, I did speed this video up quite a bit, so I'm just showing you here which Prismacolor Premier Pencils that I will be using to complete the majority of this double page. I was not able to get a good image when I was trying to freeze frame on the pencils like I've done in past color alongs. So that's why I'm kind of doing this here. And as I mentioned in the last video, if there is something that you're not sure what I'm using and you would really like to know, feel free to please comment below and I will definitely do my best to uh, let you know what number pencil or what it was that I used in regards to stamping or any other questions you have. I mentioned in part one of this video when I did this flip through and saw this page for the first time, I really envisioned those windows as stained glass. And so with that in mind, I wanted to keep many of the other objects in the page very neutral. I like the idea of old books and just kind of that old worn paper, that kind of look and wanted the windows to be the star of the show, so to speak. What I did here was I decided to do the small diamond shapes in blues and greens and then the larger pieces of the window in reds, oranges, and yellows. If you guys do enjoy content like this or you find something in this video useful or helpful, inspirational, please consider subscribing to my channel, liking, commenting, sharing, all that good stuff. It really does help my little channel grow and I'm really enjoying creating content and sharing all of this journey with you guys as I learn and, and go along on this. I do appreciate all of your support out there more than I can say. It just means so much to me that I've had so much love from this crafting and coloring community. It's just been a lot of fun talking with you all, sharing with you all, getting tips and finding my own inspiration, all of those things. So thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to watch this. So I took a little time to think about how I wanted this pattern to look and, and which colors I wanted to lay where. I knew that I wanted to do the blues and the greens and the red, oranges and yellows. I wanted all of those in there and ultimately decided to do um, the small diamonds or squares in the blues and greens alternating in the row and then alternating in those um, in between rows too. So you can see I also you know, do blue, green, blue in that pattern.
So as you guys see, as I was filling in each of these little window pieces, I left the center area fairly light as I knew once I went in with my colorless blender, it would definitely darken up quite a bit as you can see here, and then just kind of blend all of that really well. When I was done with this, I decided to go in with an even darker shade of each color. You'll see in a minute here as I wanted to create a little bit more of a deeper shadow uh, for those. So I go in with a, a like an indigo blue and then kind of a forest green to go around the the outline of each piece. So here you can see me adding in that forest green around those kind of limish green window panes and it just really to me made all the difference. Adding just that little bit darker shade made everything else kind of stand out and create that depth that I felt like something was missing when I stood back and looked at, at this and the blue too will just it just makes it pop I think so much more. Initially, when I first started doing these dark outlines, I don't think my intention was to do every window pane, but then just doing some of them, it just felt like it was unfinished. And again, I really liked adding that. I think it just really made the difference that I was looking for in creating more of a uh, stained glass window image that I was going for. Now I'm starting with the bigger pieces of the window pane and I did these in a pattern of red, orange, and yellow alternating in the same manner that I did with the uh, blues and the greens. I ended up doing three colors for each of these basically where there was a, a darker red, a lighter red, and then adding in a yellow, kind of this pale yellow, I ended up just going over each of them with and then blending them all out.
I decided to go in with my colorless blender individually doing the reds first, then cleaning off the blender tip, going into the orange, cleaning off the blender tip, and then of course going into the yellow because I didn't want that to accidentally transfer too much. Since this was just a repeating pattern from this row, I do turn the camera off here shortly and you will magically see it go from <laughs> this section all done to all of the stained glass window being done. And that was just because I wanted to save time with this video. I didn't think it was necessary to really show me doing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, in regards to this window pane and decided to just finish off the rest of the window while I sat and watched a movie with my family. So here is the window all finished. You guys can see the pattern that I ended up using and how pretty it looks. I just really like the way this came out. I decided to leave the spaces between the window panes just white as they were. I know typically that's usually black, but I just felt like making those sections darker, I felt like would just make the page feel really heavy. And I liked the outcome of it when it was all said and done. Here I'm just kind of deciding what stampings I want to use. And what I'm showing there was uh, the stamp ink pad thing I don't know what they're called um, that I will be using later on when I do that but I'm starting with the ink bottle that is here beginning with the cork and I kind of showed the uh, browns that and the beiges that I used to complete that I knew that I wanted to make the bottle kind of a cobalt blue so that is what I went for and then making the ink house label that old paper look like I did for the letter and the books that you'll see as I uh, continue on. After blending out all of the bottle with the blue and the gray, it really took away any uh, glass look highlight from there. So I am just going in here with my little beloved pencil uh, eraser brush. I just love this little thing. I, I need to get myself some more because I use them a lot. Not just for uh, erasing mistakes and things. As you can see, it's great to use to add those highlights that may have been taken away from the page or sometimes you just want to lighten it up a tad without removing all of your color and I think it works out really well.
And same thing here, I went back in with my little eraser pencil in some spots and then with my black colored pencil, uh, just randomly, not really you know, going across all of the label, but in between some of the letters just to make it look a little bit sharper and not so dull and just giving a little bit more depth to that label around the outsides as well. And this is where things got really scary for me, if I'm being honest. I uh, had stopped the video and really tested out several of my stamp inks and the techniques that I use uh, before going in and deciding to use just this one kind of light brown top color um, with the little sponge and then also my brush blender here. You can see I'm using I am not experienced with using my stamp inks very much for areas. So if anybody has any suggestions or tips, if you guys use stamp inks for coloring book backgrounds or you have another uh, you know, creator out there that you love to follow for this, I would love to learn a little bit more because I feel like I definitely could use uh, improvement in this area. So um, I just did not want the, if you guys watched my color along, uh, it was in this book of Francois the Frog, I used my gray stamp inks to kind of create this stormy cloud background, which was very easy to do because as you see, it is very easy to lay down lumps of color, even though I'm trying to be gentle with you know tapping it out and then blending it out you can see it's quite blotchy here and I'm starting to get anxious a little bit at this point because I'm like oh did I just ruin my page in the end it turned out fine like I said ah, this is a learning channel and I'm learning how to do these things and uh, kind of going in lightly and a few times more and then also uh, I will take pencil in again and then blending that out it, it actually worked really well the pencil and then using the colorless blender really blended it out pretty darn good I think but I definitely can see what I see as my mistakes and um, I definitely would like to improve this technique because it definitely is nice to use to get that kind of soft background that I was looking for. I did not want the table area to be really heavy and I like the area around the words to be very light and want to continue that theme as I color in this book. Now that I feel like I've laid down enough of the stamp ink color, I am working on the kind of final piece with my shadows using my darker brown pencil around some items. And I feel like this is another thing that just really helped further bring this page to life. I like the way the um, shadows casted came out around, particularly around the uh, watch here and then around the paper and then um, the table it really helped kind of define it I think a little bit better
And now we're just kind of finalizing the last piece of the blending with the colorless blender. And uh, I was very soft with this and careful because it was very easy to get like thick line streaks. So I really tried to create kind of that gradual blends that I was looking for from the shadow and it really blended well with the stamp ink. I don't know if I have done this before with the pencil over the ink. I, I can't recall. I've only used the stamp inks maybe two or three times so I will definitely be returning to this technique because it worked really well and created that nice gradual shadow around the areas that I wanted to. So we have reached the end of this video. If you guys made it to the end, you are awesome and I appreciate you so, so much. Again, if you are not a subscriber and you enjoyed watching this or you learned something new, please do consider subscribing to my channel, hitting that little notification bell, and I will be uploading at least once a week generally, sometimes twice. But until we speak again, I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day. Remember to take time for yourself and be kind to yourself and to others. Bye.